Hi there, Arcego here. Today I have my Axial SCX102 Cherokee XG on the bench. Axial Fest 2019 is coming up in a couple weeks. We gotta get this thing ready for the trails. I got a sweet censored motor ESC combo from Tekin. We're gonna install that today. I also got some scale goodies from Knight Customs. I'm gonna share those with you guys. I'm super excited about them. Also, RC4 wheel drive, got some metal bead locks and some rock sliders. Today I'm gonna to share my setup tips, mods and upgrades to get this thing ready for the trails. Stay tuned. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, flight videos, and other things related to RC. So make sure you guys like and subscribe if you wanna see more. I also share a lot of behind the scenes stuff on my Instagram and Facebook. So make sure you guys check those out. This video is part of my Road to Axial Fest series. I have a couple other videos that I'll put a link in the description box below and also my latest one up here. In my last video, I vinyl wrapped the body. I actually did the body before I even got the car running. I was so excited about it. So today we actually have to get this thing ready for the trails. It's my first time attending Axial Fest. If you guys are gonna be there, make sure to comment below. I'd love to meet up with you guys. I'm gonna be doing some filming and interviews and I cannot wait. So first, let's go over the Tekken Motor ESC combo. This is my third censored setup and my second Tekken Motor ESC. A couple things that make the Tekken RX4 a really great setup for an RC crawler. It's element proof, so it's gonna be able to withstand getting dirt on it, a little bit of water on it. It's gonna be just fine. You probably don't wanna be submerging it like a submarine in the water. I have an RX-4 in my Pro MT. I'll put a link up here to that video. I love it, there's so much tunability. You can also get a hot wire and link it to your phone and do a ton of programming with your phone directly through Bluetooth. It comes with this cute little fan that you install over the metal heat sink. It's also 6S compatible, that's kind of crazy. You really don't wanna be running 6S in your crawlers. The transmission is really built for two or three S, but those guys running 6S on your crawlers, this thing can handle it. It has 13 drag brake settings. You can also set the voltage cutoff based on the LiPo cell count that you're running. So if you guys are interested in doing some programming and getting your rig completely tuned for the features and the way that you like to drive, this thing is gonna be for you. It is on the pricier end, so this would be kind of a spend, but I think it's a great investment if you're looking to take your rig to the next level. Now let's talk about the Tekken Rock 412. This is my first experience with a Rock 412. They make it in regular and also in HD. And this is a crawling specific motor. The kind of driving that I like to do and that I'm running two and 3S batteries, I ended up going with the 2300 KV setup. That was recommended by Tekken. Some people put outrageous KV motors in their crawlers, but I'm really looking for the slow speeds. That's gonna give you some low end torque, but also the speed if you need it. And this is a censored motor. If you're gonna go with brushless in a crawler, you wanna make sure that it is censored. And without going into too much detail, a censored motor knows exactly the position it's in when it starts up. If you have a brushless, uncensored setup, you're gonna get this cogging or kind of motor skipping at the low end. And for a crawler, that's not ideal. You want really smooth, slow rotation of your motor. So a censored motor is gonna know that position. It's gonna start up nice and smooth for you and you can go really, really slow. This is a four pole motor. It also has a rebuildable design. So if you guys need to replace anything or wanna get in there and clean it, you can take all of the components apart and rebuild it and clean it if you want. I would recommend this motor for someone that's more intermediate to advanced in RC. You're gonna have to solder the motor to the ESC and also a cable that connects your ESC to your battery. So definitely make sure that you're comfortable doing your own soldering for this. The motor can has this nice heat sink feature on the exterior. It's gonna help prevent the motor from overheating. And lastly, it's element proof. So just like the RX-4, this thing is gonna be able to handle snow, water, rocks, and mud, and anything you throw at it on the trails. Next, I wanna share the RC four-wheel drive hop-ups that I'm putting on this thing. I got some Onyx 1.9 metal bead locks. These things look really cool. I browsed through all of the bead locks they had on their website. These ones look really nice and they're relatively affordable for a set of four. I installed one on my KO2 tires already and it looks super cool. One thing I'm gonna have to do to these is do one small mod though. I got these hex adapters that widen the stance of the rig. I gotta widen this hole to be able to use the hex adapters. A little bit nervous of drilling into these really nice beadlock rims, but we're gonna do it anyway because I wanna use those hex adapters. I'm running my Proline KO2 BF Goodrich All Terrains on this. 
If you're running these rims with Proline tires, make sure that you get the metal beadlock rings that fit to the Proline tires. I'll put links to all these in the description box below. I also got some SCX-10-2 Cherokee rock sliders from RC four wheel drive. These things look super sick. Because of the way the body sits, it sits down a little bit. So the rock sliders actually need a little bit of offset. I had to do a little mod for this, putting a shim underneath the chassis so that the rock sliders would sit level with the body. But I think it looks really, really cool and I'm satisfied with how it turned out. Lastly, I got some cool Night Customs scale goodies. I'm gonna be installing a full My Trigger C light kit in one of my future videos. I wanted to make sure that my rear lenses looked really realistic. On the front grille, it did come with a lot of cool scale detail, but on the rear, it was just the Lexan clear body. So these rear light lenses, it's gonna add a really nice cool scale look that's gonna complement my My Trigger C light kit. These are gonna need to be painted. So I have the X27 red clear Tamiya paint and the X26 clear orange. I might also have to use a clear coat to give it a nice even shine on the exterior. Mm -hmm. One great thing about Knight Customs Parts is that you can go on his website, click on the part that you're installing, and he gives you the instructions on how to do it. Sometimes there's an informational video, sometimes it's just written out what screws you need and how he would recommend installing it. Sometimes it's just a little shugu and scuffing up the part. So definitely check that out. I also had to get the rear lighting housing. This is gonna hold the lights in place. It goes on the interior of the body. You can't have an overlander without a snorkel. One thing I've been really liking lately is magnetic mounting of my body to my chassis. I did that on my blue hard body Jeep Wrangler on my XS01 chassis. It's just a really cool feature and you don't have to use unscale body clips unsightly. So with these, you can use neodymium magnets that slot right over these body posts. These are neodymium magnets. I got them online. I'll put a link in the description box below. One thing about working with magnets is that they are freaking strong and they want to stick to everything. So make sure to kind of isolate them from the rest of the stuff that you're working on, all the screws and stuff. Otherwise, they're just going to pick up like razor blades and stuff. Another thing too is that if they snap together, they can snap together with so much force that they actually break like I just broke too. First, I'm gonna cut these off the parts tree and then we're just gonna use some shugu and goop them down to each of the posts. And then you install this piece on the top of the Lexan body and then you can snap your body in place on the chassis. Kind of cool. People have been asking me about that, so I'll put a link to these in the description box below. I think these will work for any SCX-102 chassis. All right, enough blabbing. Let's take this thing into the garage and let's solder our motor to our ESC. I didn't do a good electronics mapping with my XS01 kit and my extra speed hard body, so I ended up having to cut part of the interior of the hard body to fit the electronics. If I had planned ahead, I wouldn't have had to cut anything. So word of wisdom, map everything out, make sure all the cables and everything are gonna reach and that your body is gonna fit on without any having to cut or move anything around. Okay, let's take it away. Got our soldering iron heating up. I gotta cut some cables to size. Not my most favorite thing to do, but you guys can do it. I haven't been soldering for that long. I mean, I've sort of been soldering since I started RC, but I never really perfected it until a couple weeks ago. The manual gives you instructions on how to hook this up. So make sure that you follow this. This is for the brushless system. And then they have another setup for the brush system. First, we're gonna pre-tin all the terminals. So basically filling up these little cups with solder. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the motor posts. Soldering iron is heated up. We got our solder touch it to the metal and touch some solder to it. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the posts on our motor. So these don't really have a place to pool, so just be careful. Now we're gonna map out our wires and see where we need to cut them. Alrighty, so there we have it. Everything is all soldered together. I even added my battery connector XT60 here, not included, installed the fan here, and all the soldering looks to be decent. 
don't now know. we're gonna drill the holes in our beadlock rims. So this is so I can use the hex adapters or the wheel extenders. What we need for this is a drill. I have a Ryobi cordless drill. Then you're gonna need a series of drill bits. So the thing about drilling holes, if you want them to be straight, you don't just go for the immediate size that you need. You wanna drill your way up to that. So use a smaller bit and then slowly drill a bigger hole and that's gonna make sure that all your holes are straight. Okay, let's take it away. I'm wearing safety goggles. <laughs> Does it fit? No. So now we're gonna use our next biggest size and drill our bigger hole. Ta-da! We got all our holes drilled. Now we just have to shave down a little bit of this so that the cap will fit on top of the beadlock. So I'm gonna take my Dremel. One thing to mention when you're dremeling metal, you wanna make sure to wear a mask and safety goggles. I actually don't have a mask handy, so I'm just gonna use my surf hood. It's gonna be really, 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 really hot. Okay, so now we're done. Let's install our beadlock rims. If you guys are new to beadlock rims, I'll show you guys what it looks like. You can avoid using CA or super glue, which I hate touching. And you can also set your tire pressure. So kind of a cool feature of beadlock rims other than them looking super cool. So let's take it away. So these are the components of a beadlock rim. You have the outer rim here, which is what you see. You have this internal beadlock ring. And this is gonna lock onto the bead of your tire. So you have your front and your rear, and they're gonna clamp onto this blue piece. So we have our foams in here, we have our tire, and then we have this bead, which is this circular part here. You can see the little bevel. KO2 tires have symmetrical tread, so it doesn't matter which direction you install these. So before you clamp it down, make sure the spacing on the bead is even all around the full tire. And there you have it, Onyx 19B locks from RC4 Wheel Drive. Now let's install these on the chassis. We're finally ready to turn this thing on. I got my wiring all cleaned up, everything's hooked up. I also got this cool 3D printed interior that sits on top of your electronics. I think it looks really cool. It's from RC Voodoo. He also has an eBay store and a YouTube channel. I'll put a link to those in the description box below. It comes in a few pieces, including this dashboard here and also the back seats. You have to screw it together. It adds that nice scale look when you look through the windows. He also makes these cool scale accessories like this Coleman cooler. Really neat. I'm gonna put this on my roof rack. I'm gonna be using my Spectrum DX5 Rugged. I have an SR515 receiver, enough channels to hook up my winch and light kit. So let's get to it. Okay, we got our transmitter turned on. We're gonna turn on the ESC. I'm running also a 2S Adventure Series LiPo. This is a 5,000 milliamp, really high discharge rate, 100C. These just came out recently from Jen's Ace. So I'll put a link to these in the description below as well. Got my XT60 connectors on here. We got our sensor cable attached. I use a little bit of the silicone grease on the sensor port on the ESC and also the sensor port on the motor. Use some zip ties and some cable organizers that were provided with the SCX-102 kit. Everything's in my waterproof receiver box. I also gooped a little piece of black straw here so my antenna cable can kind of hang outside of the receiver box and slots in and it's all protected there. Okay, let's turn this on. we got steering so when you first turn this on i've actually this is my second time turning it on when you first turn it on you're gonna have to do a radio calibration of setting your neutral point and your endpoints. pretty easy you can do that directly with the buttons on the esc itself you can tune a lot of things if you have the teak and hot wire you can actually tune a lot more settings a few important things with crawlers is you want to make sure to set your drag brake strength another thing that's very important is setting your low voltage cutoff point based on the cell count of your battery and then you can set your trigger settings so if you want to have immediate braking when you press forward or you want to go immediate reverse you can do all those things directly with the buttons on the esc itself or if you have the hot wire as i mentioned you can go do that with bluetooth there's a lot more tunability with the hot wire and here the fan is running it's on that's going to keep your ESC cool and let's give it a little throttle 
I also had to set my steering endpoints so that my links were not hitting the diff box cover here. The SCX-10 II does have lock differentials. So when you turn the tires, all your tires are gonna move in unison. I am excited to take this out on the trails. We're pretty much done with this. I only have to install my light kit and my RC four wheel drive winch at the front. But in summary, I got an RC four wheel drive, tough armor, front bumper, running the one nine Onyx beadlock metal rims. I also got the SOR wrap and Proline sent me this cool toe strap inside. I have some winch line and a toe strap. Gotta have that thanks to Proline. I got the CC hand window guards. Also got the Night Customs light lenses. Getting some custom plates sent to me now, so can't wait for those. Got the windshield wipers that I added recently and got those online, I think on eBay. Also got the Night Customs 3D printed snorkel. We installed our magnetic body post mounts. Another thing I did here was added a piece of weather stripping. There was a little gap between the body and the bumper and I wanted to make sure that we weren't gonna have any gap there. We also got our RC four wheel drive metal sliders. And again on our tires, I'm running KO2s from Proline and we got some little hex extenders. I think they're 15 millimeter offset. Some people don't really like those. We're gonna give them a try. There might be a little bit of wheel rub on the body fenders. So if there is, I might have to cut those away. If I end up not liking those, I can always put on the original hex adapters. I did set the ride height pretty high. So that's pretty much the maximum on the threading of our shocks because I was getting a little tie rub on the body. I'll see how it crawls like that. I might have to do some tuning after we get it on the trail. So that is it for this video. I am so excited to have this thing up and running finally. Axial Fest is less than two weeks away. We only got a few more things to do. Got to install my winch, got to install my light kit. Stay tuned for those videos coming real soon. I also have an exciting announcement related to Axial Fest. I can't say anything. I actually don't even know anything yet, but there's a big announcement coming soon. Thank you so much to all the companies who supported this build thus far. So Tekken Racing, SOR, RC Four Wheel Drive, Night Customs, ProLine, RC Voodoo. This wouldn't have happened without you guys, so thank you. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe as always. Or see you later. That's really hard work. Ah! Oh no, see, that's. Oh, great. These are so hard to work with. One thing to mention with dremeling on metal,